Good morning. My name is Javier Aguirre. I'm the director of the Office of the Diversion and Reentry Services for the County of Santa Clara. And on behalf of the County of Santa Clara and all of our partners at the Reentry Network, welcome to this um, an amazing event this morning. Um, I want to welcome everyone and thank you for coming to our Reentry Business Incubator kickoff. The County of Santa Clara is excited to launch our partnership with ESO Ventures an entrepreneurial support organization that provides the confidence, competence, and capital for any black or brown person to become a successful entrepreneur. What an exciting morning. Um, as many of you uh, were able to network in, out in the, in the lobby and enjoying some a really great cup of coffee and really starting thinking about ideas for these type of businesses in our community. The partnership between ESO Ventures and our office is a testament to the commitment of both organizations to create positive change in the lives of our justice-involved clients and their families. By offering support and encouragement to these entrepreneurs, the program aims to create a ripple effect that will ultimately benefit the entire community. This new program clearly supports the county's strategic goals to advance equity and increase the economic and social vitality for our clients. In particular, this partnership champions our reentry network goal of clear path to employment by connecting motivated clients to the tools and resources they will need to launch a business and also connecting them to a network of other entrepreneurs who have been in similar situations but have also succeeded in creating a business. We are very grateful to have this time with you to envision the future of our community that supports new businesses led by our former or current clients who will have the opportunity to hire or even hire our own clients. These businesses will offer clients the opportunity to develop personal and most importantly, generational wealth to break the cycles of poverty and incarceration. I look forward to hearing back in a few months about the many businesses and ideas in the reality of being future customers of these businesses. Thank you again for your efforts and commitment to our common goal of empowering our clients to change their lives and grow in so many positive ways. It is now my pleasure to welcome Sabrina, our Senior Director of Programs for ESO Ventures to talk more about our program. Thank you so much, Javier. Hi, everyone. I'm Sabrina. Um, I work with Ben and the amazing programs team over at ESO. We're super excited to be here and to just embrace collective entrepreneurship. Um, you know, entrepreneurs, they are the real generators of our local economy. They create strong jobs and they are here to be celebrated by all of us and to be resourced by all of us. So um, today's agenda, I inspire all of us to dream big to think outside the box, right? And to think about how we can really support entrepreneurs, not just for this cohort, but for the next cohort and for years along the way. Um, so we have a little activity that's guiding um, the morning, guiding our afternoon conversations and lunch, and that's called what would it look like if? So we ask you, you know, no dream is, you know, dream big, please uh, share what you think um, entrepreneurship should look like. Um, Along those lines, we have our reentry entrepreneurship uh, resource hub. So this is in partnership with um, More Than Our Worst. We are creating an open source site uh, to provide resources to entrepreneurs um, that are coming up within our programs in the future. Um, and the idea is that we want to be able to support all the community organizations that are working with entrepreneurs. So um, please sign up if you'd like to stay um, updated, and we will continue to uh, provide some content there. Uh, so for today, you know, really today is a conversation with all of us to not only announce this a wonderful program and partnership, um, but for also for us to build this ecosystem, for us to talk about, you know, how do we work together to really resource our entrepreneurs and help them take their businesses to the next level. Um, and so with that, I just want to highlight the entrepreneurs in the house. So if you're an entrepreneur, please stand up. Um, and whether you're in this program or you've been in past programs, uh, Marshall, who you'll hear from, Marshall, you can stand up because <laughs> you're going to come to the stage soon. Um, Rick, I know you're thinking about being an entrepreneur. Please stand up. You know who to resource. Amika. <laughs> Rosie, I see you. Don't hide. Rosie um, provided 
Uh, with Doris, our coffee this morning. So if you want to talk about the coffee business, Rosie, your, your person. Um, and let's just continue to resource our wonderful entrepreneurs. So with that said, we're going to uh, share a little bit about Marshall's story. Um, and we are going to talk a little bit about um, just kind of what the landscape is for entrepreneurs that have backgrounds and entrepreneurs that are looking to start their own businesses. I'm going to kick it off with a short little video. I don't know if you've seen this one yet. Access to health care is broken. Project Pet innovates care and delivery models at the intersection of people, animals, and our shared environments to change this. We address access to care issues like housing insecurity, mental health, substance abuse challenges, and reentry through working with the community and the human animal bond. The ESO Ventures, with this commitment to entrepreneurship and community, became an ally in our pursuit of better health outcomes. Their influence has been impactful over shaping my business approach as a confident entrepreneur. has been enlightening to engage with peers, all driven by a common entrepreneurial spirit, promoting a sense of community inside our cohort. The funding we received ensured our sustainability and growth potential. This support empowered us to broaden our reach, deepen our impact, and innovate further in the long term. It really amazed me the level of attention I received from the people that I had just met. They still picked up the phone for me even after we graduated cohort. They reached out to community members, contacted partners, and made meetings happen for me. And that was the degree of wealth that I really never felt from a program. This journey enhances my ability to communicate with intention and create an open dialogue and the spirit of community inside my cohort. Project Pets Future involves launching our access to care solutions under the One Health model, introducing mental health and wellness principles through dog training, and providing community-funded veterinary care services. We also offer quality plant-based superfoods for your dogs. Join us in our mission or contact us for support through our website, projectpet.org, or on Instagram at underscore project underscore pet. You can also attend some of our community events of Together, we can rewrite the narrative of healthcare access and deliver the future well. Um, okay, so I had some rapid fire questions for you that I didn't tell you about, um, and this was Ben's idea, so if they go terribly, you know who to blame. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Rapid fire. Okay. <laughs> what is a TV show that you've binged? Sumo. Sumo. What's your morning, um, your morning beverage? Water. Water. It's very healthy. It's on brand. Uh, this is a Ben's question. I just want to prep you. What's a song that you listen to when sad? That's why I prepped you. It was a hard question. <laughs> 42 Doug. <laughs> and what's your favorite dog breed? Rottweiler. Ooh, I definitely thought you were going to say Pitbull. It's fine. I have a Pitbull, but it's okay. Um, <laughs> thank you for... Those weren't too bad. No. Okay. <laughs> um... Okay, so we've heard Marshall's story. Uh, Marshall's, you know, an alum. Uh, Marshall's part of our, our advisory council for our reentry cohort. Um, and what I appreciate about Marshall is that he will keep it real. He'll tell us what we need to improve. Um, and he's really there for not only us to give us feedback, but for other entrepreneurs. Um, and that's really what, you know, this program is about, is us resourcing each other. Um, so you walked us through some of the hurdles that entrepreneurs face, right? So especially um, entrepreneurs are with records. So that's, you know, access to stable housing, barriers to employment. Uh, you had mentioned um, navigating complication, like the complicated systems just to get an ID. Is there any other things that you felt like are really top of mind for folks that have records that are kind of getting into entrepreneurship? I, I think is. The community really embracing them wholeheartedly, uh, embracing people that have 
uh, experiencing contact and recognizing that, you know, community, you know, when you're in it, when it's uncomfortable. It's, it's not comfortable, it's not easy, it's, it's kind of sticky and icky, and that's when you know you're getting started. So I think the community really uh, embracing people uh, that have uh, justice contact, I think should be top of mind in how they're received. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, we were, we've also talked just about hurdles that traditional black and brown entrepreneurs face, right? It's limited access to funding, it's you know re weak relationship with bankers and lenders, um, and then just, you know, less general, generational wealth, right? You're, you're starting um, at a deficit in some ways. And then, you know, black and brown entrepreneurs are more likely to financially um, support their elders and their, um, their family members. But, you know, despite all the hurdles that we've all listed and that we all kind of know working in this space, right? Um, you did the thing, you launched Project Pet. Uh, so what made you want to be an entrepreneur? I, I've always, a, a rebellious spirit as a kid, <laughs> I've always had a rebellious spirit. I've always been against the grain. I've kind of been wired a certain way. And so uh, 25 years old, um, climbed the corporate ladder pretty quick in uh, Verizon. And uh, I saw very quickly that that wasn't going to be my life. That I wasn't really geared for long term in corporate America like that. And so we went hard left. And <laughs> <laughs> the hard left is here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love for it. sure. Um, so there's over a million small business owners with records in the U.S., uh, which was a surprising stat to me. Um, what lived experiences or attitudes do you think um, entrepreneurs with records give? Like, what do they have that gives them a competitive advantage? Because we're some of the few people that knows what it feels like when you're in that cell by yourself and nobody was there. If you got a lot of mail, you were lucky. If you got visits, you were blessed. But you know that you were the only person that was there. And then over time, something begins to galvanize and you're like, okay, like, I'm still here and I keep going. And you just keep going, right? So. When you uh, when you're an entrepreneur, right? Like, still the same thing. <laughs> you're there until you build the community for yourself, because nobody's gonna build it for you. You go find the people like ESO, Sabrina, Ben, and but you you don't ever forget where you were at in in that mindset where you were at when uh, where you were you know incarcerated. You don't forget that, or you shouldn't anyway. Um, but that but that feeling that you had when you when you got out and you felt empowered and you felt like all I got to do is same stuff. So uh, the competitive advantage is you know what it's like when only you have you <laughs> in there in the circumference. And uh, a, a lot of people we uh, we could try to medicate that with social media and other stuff like that. We try to run from being. Uh, you know, isolated. Um, so that is a severe, at least for me, you know, that was a competitive advantage. Yeah, that's a great answer. Uh, um, that resonates with me. Like entrepreneurship is a lonely game and sometimes you are looking yourself in the mirror a lot, right? And you only have the belief in yourself. And uh, yeah, thank you for sharing that. That was great. Um, our partners at More Than Our Worst, um, who are supporting us with that reentry resource site, so please check it out. Um, they shared some really uplifting data, which I was excited to read about. So the number one is that returning citizens earn more as entrepreneurs than they do as employees. Um, number two is that returning citizens have lower recidivism rates um, as entrepreneurs than they do as employees. So given this data, uh, what's one piece of advice that you have for entrepreneurs? <laughs> go go make your money go make your money man <laughs> like <laughs> it's not a <laughs> I, I feel like there's a lot of there's a lot of like 
popular news that'll get in the way between you and your customers, right? And it's, it's between you and them and they got nothing to do with nobody else. How best you serve them, how best you solve a problem, how best you are granular about details for the people that you're servicing, right? Uh, I, I think that like, just, just gonna make your money. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't neglect to do that. <laughs> That, that's the best advice. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, okay, and then final question. What's one thing that you'd like to see from this room and this community as we support entrepreneurs? Be bold. A stiff upper lip. Like, it's, it's a lot of, I'll talk about my friends. Uh, if, if, if you're attempting to give service, and man, I went down here and I tried to give these people this and this and they they, they and they just they they cursed me out and they told me to get out of here. Well, probably it's gonna happen. Probably gonna happen a few more times. And then if after it happens that time, it's gonna happen a few times after that. But how sincere is the intention? How sincere is the intention of service? Is it lip service or is it really sincerity? Because when it's sincere, we go after it with the same tenacity that we boast about our LinkedIn uh, identities, right? Because a lot of people put a lot of stock in that. And I know nobody in here does that. But <laughs> when you are involved in community, it's sticky, it's icky, it's grimy, and that's where you see it doesn't have any, it, that's where you see yourself, and you either have time for it. And you either are big enough to accept that challenge and do it with a smile on your face and not be begrudging, or you know, you maybe got a little more work to do. But the sincerity that you go after this, this thing of change, and especially as pertaining to reentry, like if we all give the same veracity that we do our professional careers to this intention, we can see change and feel change in our community. So that would be it. Thank you. I'm bringing up the wonderful Ben Wanzo for our next, uh, next section. Thank you, Sabrina, and thank you, Marshall. Marshall's out the door, he's like, I'm out. <laughs> um, so if I appear nervous, it's not because I'm speaking in front of all of you guys, it's because I walked past the courthouse, the sheriff's place, the police officers, and it's just something about that still, uh, still rattles me a bit. Um, but I'm here today to represent ESO, and my ear is ringing, so if I seem a little scatterbrained, it's not because I didn't prepare, it's just because my ear is like really bothering me. But what is ESO Ventures or SO Ventures? It is an entrepreneurial support organization. We work with entrepreneurs to ensure that they deliver what they said they're gonna deliver to their customers and to, to their community. It's important because as Marshall said, entrepreneurship is a lonely road. Uh, I was an entrepreneur, I am an entrepreneur. I started my entrepreneurial journey about 15 years ago and I remember my high school called me back to give a speech. And in that speech, I just talked about how lonely I was, right? I came from a uh, pretty good school down the street, business school, and I stepped into entrepreneurship. I left corporate America as Marshall did, and I was just really lonely and really scared and didn't know if a customer was gonna walk through the door. And I thought I had community, but the work I was doing was like too small scale for the big timers who were trying to do these tech companies. So all my entrepreneurial support friends left me, and the microphone left me. <laughs> and um, it's still on. And it ended up being like a really lonely place. Um, but soon customers started coming, and I, I stuck with it, as Marshall said, right? Like you have to look and see that you have yourself. And community started coming. And I met my partner, Alfredo, and he came into my store. He said, You're doing a great thing. Let me write an article about you. And through that article, more and more customers came. Um, so thank you, Alfredo, for that. Um, and I realized my love was for entrepreneurship because entrepreneurs started coming saying, hey, how did you do this? And children, and not children, yeah, they actually started coming. They were like, oh, you must be rich. Like, you have your own store. Like, you're the man. And I was like, no, I'm broke. 
like I have no money. The store is like just a front. It's my LinkedIn page, right? Like I'm not really doing anything. Um, so, so with that, in recognition that entrepreneurship is a hard road, when my friend Alfredo approached me and said, hey, the council member wants to do something for District 6, wants to do something for underinvested, under, underserved communities. Um, can, we, can we think of something? And I was like, man, this is like my life's calling. Like, let's do it. So he called on me, he called on Martha, our other partner. And we just came together and we started thinking, like, how can we really make entrepreneurship real and accessible for everyone? Uh, we say black and brown folks, that's our starting demographic, but those are the folks who are left out. Those are the folks who don't have home equity line of credit. Those are the folks who live in neighborhoods where entrepreneurship is not real, right? Like you have to go outside your community for opportunity. You can't build where you are. And we said we wanna change that narrative. We wanna make sure that entrepreneurs can build where they are, they have community where they are, and they understand that if they have a great idea, then they can execute against that idea. And it doesn't have to be a lonely road. And you don't have to be, try to fit in somewhere else. You can actually just be the person that you are. So we started ESO Ventures with that in mind. We've had success so far to date. We've been able to work with over 200 entrepreneurs who have launched businesses or have realized entrepreneurship is not for them, which is a win as well, right? Because the last thing you wanna do is waste a lot of resources trying to invest in a company that's not going to work. So if we can paint a picture that, look, this is how you succeed, or hey, maybe this is not for you, then we've done our job. And that's what we wanna do here. We're thankful to the city, uh, county of Santa Clara for giving us the opportunity to work with the citizens to create value, to build community, and bring opportunity to this area. With that, I wanna talk about our three C's, and then I'm gonna show you a video of just what ESO is all about in action. So the three C's are confidence, competence, and capital. Confidence, who has confidence in this room? Nice, who has, <laughs> right. who has confidence to start a business tomorrow? Sweet, all right. So a lot of people have that. I'm glad you guys have that. And I believe you guys, I believe myself that I had confidence. Marshall believed in himself. But it hits and you lose that confidence quickly, right? No one's walking through the doors. This product that I thought I had, this idea that I thought I had that people wanted, no one's asking for it. What do I do? Well, you get with the community and you learn that other people are having those same struggles. Other people are having those same challenges. You start talking to them and you realize, okay, this is how you work through it, this is how I can work through it. You encourage one another. So the first C is confidence. The second C is competence. Competence is you have to know a lot to run a business, right? It's not good enough just to have an idea. It's not good enough to say I have expertise. It's not good enough to just be passionate. You have to learn how to run a fully functional business. And that's what ESO provides. We provide the workbook, the coaching, the advisors to ensure entrepreneurs know that they are running a fully functional business. And the last C is capital. Capital is everything. It takes money to make money. Make money. We all know that, right? All right, everybody know that? Okay, cool. So it takes money to make money. <laughs> and um, what we did at ESO is said we don't wanna create dreamers. We just don't wanna put people through a 10 week, 20 week program, have them create this great idea, and then don't have any resources to actually apply to the business. So we have our handshake model, which is a very friendly, low cost, low interest capital product that's non-dilutive, that allows the entrepreneur to say, I wanna start a cafe, all I need is $10,000. ESO says, we have you. We have your $10,000 for you. Go make a success of it. Return that $10,000 so we can reinvest it into the next entrepreneur. So that's our 3C model. Anybody can know it? Anybody know it? Anybody know it? What is it? Cap, yep, thank you, sir. Yes, <laughs> all right. So with that, I'm gonna play this quick video, um, which is going to just show you the entrepreneur journey. This is our last cohort. I hope you guys enjoy it, um, and I'll be back after it's done. Weeks have flown by. We have seen the growth of ESO entrepreneurs go from maybe I wanna have a business to knowing the exact next steps to building where they are and flourishing. Whether that's constructing a business plan, formalizing your business, gaining new connections, tracking customer leads, building the brand, or of course, growing sales. Let's take a look at your journey. Both sides of my family is hustlers. Everybody's been an entrepreneur, whether it be LLC or LL Street, you know what I'm saying? It was just like, for me, money meant kind of like freedom or my independence. Like I can't control 
what I want or how I want it. It comes from you and your energy. So for sales, for this revenue stuff, for your relationship with money, you got to ask yourself, do I believe in me? Do I believe in me to be this CEO, to be this founder, to build what, you know, generational wealth? Let's be real. This process wasn't always easy. We talked about how systems impact black and brown entrepreneurs and how trauma impacts our financial journeys. Um, my trauma led me to find solution, um, not just for myself, but for the people around me. And I try to work at that every single day. If I don't know, our community knows. From entrepreneurial resilience around scarcity mentality and fear of failing, to operational expertise like revenue models and owning the story of your business. Because both you and Sanchita are talking about a really key um, component, engagement, right? People just can't know about your product. They have to want to deal with it, deal with you, right? And when you have people asking questions, that's even more of a point for you to want to answer, to want to engage and push them more to that finish, finish line. And we can't forget the amazing coaching sessions. One thing I said in one of the sessions was that raising my first 10,000 was harder than the first million. So like this thing on fundraising and um, how to build, like what do, what do funders care about? How do you get to the right person? How to structure that? The only thing I can think of um, that maybe they were the reason why they were pushing you as sole proprietor because sole proprietorship is going to be the easiest to get registered and also the cheapest. It actually costs you zero. Um, so that might be why. But along with that comes, you know, your personally liable. A lot of people do get stuck because they're trying to be, they're trying to have everything exact. Um, it's not a perfect science. It's a, it's a dance. And the more you have grace on yourself, um, the easier it is to know that, you know, each day you did more than you did the next day. Like, you know, like it's not about um, having all the answers to everything. Your specialty is running your business and providing great quality service or product to your customers. It's really beautiful to like dream something and watch it grow and um, see the people that came out. Sabrina came and it was just like some of my worlds colliding and then just seeing the beauty of that happening on that block is really uh, special. I feel really grateful to be in that work. Coaches provided one-on-one -on -one sessions in order to uniquely support each individual entrepreneur. Each week, content was made relatable and applicable to you and your business. You showed up in your growth pods to foster a community of learning, asking questions, and challenging each other to do more while holding space for recognizing and appreciating the work that you had already done. Uh, I had a, the best sales month I've had last month, probably in about six months. So that yes! was. About that. So now we're trying to make this month better than last month. To say that I started this really quite blind and now I feel like I have vision and focus. And I just really thank all of you for helping me and supporting me and giving ideas and just allowing me to share. And um, thank you. As a business owner coming in, um, feeling like I've been doing things half right the last couple of years and now just getting so much more insight and direction and strategy. It's been mind blowing and life changing at the same time. And so I'm definitely appreciative for all of the workshops and all of the, the guests who came in and spoke um, about so many different topics. They were all so pivotal in kind of creating this change. Thank y'all so much. I swear I manifested ESO. Like I literally manifested y'all and like I do manifest Monday and I felt like now I can tell my audience I did it. Bro. Like, I literally did it. ESO asked a lot of you. In a very organic, real way, you showed up and stood out. You brought honesty and vulnerability. And y'all, we even had fun too. It was clear to us, your ESO programs team, that no matter what was going on in your lives, death of a loved one, celebration of new opportunities, shifting business model, and everything that comes with being a full human in this world today, that you are determined and dedicated to the path of liberation through entrepreneurship. Nice. Thank you. So that video is from our past cohort and you see the impact that we have on entrepreneurs, um, and it's a great one because we allow them to set the culture. Marshall talked about you can't walk into every community and feel valued and accepted, and we make sure that the entrepreneurs know that they're valued.
are accepted and that they make the connections that's going to help their business thrive because uh, we just want to see change. We want to see change for the entrepreneur that they can create generational wealth, that they can create jobs in the community and that we can start shopping from them. I mean, I have a tiger bone, my hair product, my skin product, or I've all come from ESO Ventures. I no longer shop at like Banana Republic. I got a little bit more swag because of ESO Ventures entrepreneurs. So thank you again for this opportunity. Continue to support the entrepreneurs in the community, local entrepreneurship. And I'm now gonna turn it over to Alfredo. All right, this is the exciting interactive part of the session today. First, I'm gonna ask a few panelists to come up. Eddie Trong, CEO of Trong Family Enterprises. Uh, Vanessa, reentry manager from Goodwill Silicon Valley, come on up. Mr. Israel Kanhura, you guys can come up and grab seats, Israel Kanhura. Is it the Youth Empowerment Alliance? You got a new name. Come on up, sit in these chairs. And Javier, I'm gonna hold you for last because you're gonna come up last, but you're gonna end this. So as they're getting set up, we're here for an important reason. We're here because we believe in entrepreneurship, right? How many of you here are an entrepreneur? How many of you have created a business in your life? That's about 25%. Not enough of you then, because one out of every two adults in America creates a business. One out of every two. One third of all Americans create more than one business. Why do so many people create businesses? Because businesses, like home ownership, is one of the pathways to wealth building. Raise your hand if you like wealth building. All right? So that is part of why we're here, but we're not just here for wealth building. We're here to make wealth building accessible. We're here to make sure that everybody has access to the opportunities that this amazing country has afforded certain groups. So as they're getting set up, I wanna hear what is the possibility? Did you just show up today because there's some delicious coffee from Rosie Q? Or did you show up because you think that something is possible. I'm not gonna, I'm a former teacher, so I'm not gonna embarrass you and just show up with the mic, but I wanna hear, is there anyone here who can share what is possible? What is the world you wanna see? Just say your name and share your dream. Uh, I'm Sandra from the Pro Bono Project. I wanna see how our legal services can support your businesses. Ooh, we love free, free legal services. <laughs> who else? A dream you want to see. What is possible? What is possible? I want to see our youth uh, that are being detained be able to come out and make money for themselves and their families. That is Eugene Santillan. We're in the room today because of Eugene. Thank you, Eugene. One more person. One more courageous person. I want to see some you know, city and county contracts for our entrepreneurs. All right, we're in the right place then, we're in the right place. So this panel is about what does it take to not just start, but to grow a thriving business here in Santa Clara County. And we have three different perspectives. Javier is gonna close it out, so he's gonna close it out with that very last thought on contracts. But I wanna begin with you, Israel. If you can share with us a little bit what is the work that you've been doing in this county the last 20 years? What have you seen from young people in the community? And what is that opportunity? Why were you so excited to come here today? And what do you want to see from this reentry business incubator? That's a loaded question. Thank you. Can I get some help? <laughs> this um, Israel Kanhura. I'm the superintendent for Youth Intervention Services and Project Hope with the city of San Jose. San Jose Youth Empowerment Alliance, we have a new name. It used to be called the Mayor's Gun Prevention Task Force. So for the last 30 years, the city of San Jose has invested in our youth. And I think that, you know, I'm, I'm just so delighted to be part of that process, of that opportunity, because I have seen through my work, my professional work experience, and even through myself, 
that is not always that easy, right? We, we're immigrants, we come from hard communities where opportunities don't often come our way. So me being able to like see how we can empower youth, our youth right now that are in risk and giving them hope where sometimes it's very difficult for them to feel that hope. And the opportunity that sometimes we that work in this field have is to embrace this youth, show them that there is something different. And I think that, you know, when we think about entrepreneurship, when we think about businesses, we often don't think about our kids. And Silicon Valley is, a, is really about entrepreneurship, people making it, but who's making it? Who are those individuals that are making it most of the time? Our kids don't see themselves in Silicon Valley, right? So being close to so much opportunity, yet that opportunity is so far away, for me, it's, a, it's been a struggle, right, to show these kids that. But, you know, knowing that Alfredo and so many other folks are making it and the kids can see themselves in them. It's a great opportunity, and I'm glad that, you know, that I got to meet, uh, meet Alfredo, and I'm glad that I'm able to sit here with you all because it gives me hope. It gives me hope because we can actually show, bring you guys on board, show you guys that these are kids that sometimes don't, don't have dreams, may not even think that they can actually do the things that you're proposing today that they can actually do. You know, I don't want them to get in the system before they can even start thinking about being entrepreneurships. I want them to start thinking now because I don't want them to like, you know, obviously we want those opportunities for those folks coming out of the judicial system. We do want that. But I also want to make sure that I stop that process and I stop youth from getting into the system before they understand that they have an opportunity. Mm. I don't know, Alfredo, did I answer your question? I'm very passionate about this work, by the way. <laughs> hey, well, we're really glad to have you and your network on board. ESO has not really focused on youth. We're focused on adults, right? Mainly 25 to 45, 50 years old who are starting businesses. But Israel and, and Eddie and others who work with young people, we gotta remember, we gotta start planting those seeds early. So thank you. He's gonna create opportunities for us to share with the, the Youth Empowerment Network. He's invited us to come in August to kind of share with the network because we gotta start planting those seeds. But Israel, we're gonna come back to you, hopping over to Vanessa. I mean, I did a pre-call with each of them. This right, I, I talked to Vanessa for 10 minutes. I was like, Vanessa, we don't, we don't, I, you know exactly what you wanna say. She's been doing work in the reentry community for over a decade. What have you seen about getting employment for folks who are just as involved? And why are you so excited about this opportunity? Um, so for working in this field with uh, justice involved individuals, uh, we specifically work with in the employment aspect of it. So that's justice involved coming out, looking for employment, giving them the tools. That alone in itself is so difficult for each and every one of these individuals, each and every one of these individuals. Um, so let alone to have an opportunity to be an entrepreneur and own your own business with the village of individuals right behind you that are giving you, that you have advisors, you have coaches, you have every opportunity to succeed. Um, you will no longer will have to just work through the, the barriers of just obtaining employment. You can own your own business, you can, and you can succeed. So just employment alone, if that's so much, that, that's so difficult for so many individuals, um, I'm just so excited to see what ESO is gonna do for, for these justice involved individuals. And Vanessa, how can Goodwill Silicon Valley play a role in this kind of ecosystem that we're building? What are the, some of the services or some of the things that you think you and your organization will be able to bring to the table? So we offer uh, 90 days of subsidized employment for individuals coming out of jail, prison. Uh, we prepare them, we give them mock interviews, we help them communication, resume writing. We also have many vocational trainings, uh, HVAC, electrical, construction, uh, CNC machinist. So we prepare our case managers, our business developers, our peer mentors, work diligently with each and every one of these individuals to build them up so that they are prepared and successful. So. 
uh, uh, SL is not just going to get an individual just coming right out of prison with with an with a mind with a thought that hey this is what I want to do. Uh, working in partnership with Goodwill, Goodwill of Silicon Valley, you're getting individuals that have been built up for 90 days, constant case management, constant motivating, um, constant workshops. So when we warm hand off them to SO, they're more than ready, and they're more than ready than the day that they came out of prison. That is fantastic. Are there any other support providers here in the audience who would, might, might, might be able to make some referrals to ESO? Anyone else here? then we need to do a, get a better job getting them in the room. So if you know of someone who works with the reentry community, please, all right, share the word, because we need more partnerships. All right, oh, oh wait, some people were shy. All right, so we want to be in touch because Vanessa just basically, she saw the opportunity and she jumped forward with both feet, so we love that kind of engagement. Um, we're talking a lot about you know the city, and kind of the CBO community, um, but we also need to hear from the small business community. Being a business owner in Santa Clara County, every community is unique, and in my former life, I was the teacher for 14 years. So Israel, when you're talking about young people, I was the teacher for 14 years, and then I was a nonprofit director, and I did a lot of work with Eastside Union High School District, connecting them to the PayPals and the sales forces, and I thought it was so exciting. Yeah, we're going from Andrew Hill High School, and we're going to PayPal, and they thought it was great, and then I realized PayPal is never going to hire from the local community. The entrepreneurial kind of world that that is set up is not really accessible. And so I met Eddie Trong during that work. He was with Silicon Valley Organization. He did a lot of the career pathway work. But more recently, I've learned that Eddie comes from a family of entrepreneurs. He owns a small business here in San Jose. And Eddie, I would just love to learn a little bit more about you and your family's entrepreneurial journey. Thank you so much, Alfredo. I just want to say, I hope it's OK for me to stand. It's a little more comfortable for me. Um, I met Alfredo and Israel. And I see John Hogan over there. Good to see you, my friend. Um, we all did workforce development for Eastside Youth because those are where minority students and minority families often do not find uh, that they have the resources to be able to uh, be successful. So they need all the help that they can get. I want to start off um, by introducing my businesses with a story about my family. Um, my parents are refugees from Vietnam. They came over here to the United States with nothing except the bag over their backs and the charity of others. My mother started a small business by picking up a party favor that was thrown away at a trash, a trash can at the local flea market. She deconstructed the party favor and then she did various um, variations of it and she started an entire business that was a wedding craft and supply store and we opened the store at Eastridge Mall because of that. And, that is, and I share that story because that is a testament to the ingenuity of immigrants and minorities and those with special populations or those who have barriers to employment if we can just put that ingenuity to the test and apply it to entrepreneurship. Because as Alfredo mentioned, sometimes there are not places in corporate America for us to be present. And so entrepreneurship provides that pathway to prosperity. I today uh, followed the footsteps of my mother. My mother opened a restaurant. She opened a nail salon. And today I have four businesses. The most recent one that Alfred mentioned is a franchise restaurant as well. Uh, my first business is a consulting business. My second one is in workforce development. And a third one is in restaurant advocacy. And so I have learned over time that as a small business owner, one experiences so many different kinds of challenges so I'll just name just simply one and how ESO can specifically help businesses like mine or businesses like yours be thriving. Um, when you're a small business owner, you often find yourself in the role of being the customer service person, the cashier, to the CFO, to the CEO, all at the same time. And it is very difficult to then pause and reflect for just a moment to figure out what's the strategy for my business growth. How do I become a single person sole proprietor and grow it into a much larger small business or a larger family owned business with hundreds or thousands of employees? And when you're stuck in the minutia of the day to day every single day, 
it can be hard to break out of that day-to-day -day rhythm and to think about positioning your business for growth and for success. Because at the end of the day, why are we being entrepreneurs? Why are we doing business? It's to make money and to build generational wealth for a community that's been left out for so many years. So breaking that in the way that I think SO can really help is to provide mentorship and to provide a network of entrepreneurs that's helping people, everybody in this room, think through a strategy to grow their business. And Alfredo knows this about me. I'm the kind of person that puts my money where my mouth is, and so I will volunteer to help mentor a business owner, or if you want to be thriving as an entrepreneur, uh, Alfredo has my contact, so please feel free to reach out. And maybe we can do business together. Awesome. Eddie, did you mention the new restaurant you just opened? Yes, it is a teriyaki chicken restaurant concept. Well, tell us a little bit about the restaurant because we might have some hungry people here. <laughs> well, I, I haven't opened the restaurant just yet. So actually, let me, this is a little bit of a side thing. So my mom, when she opened her first restaurant, it was a Vietnamese restaurant that she named Mei Tan. And Mei Tan was the name of what she wanted to name her, uh, her uh, I guess, her first daughter that um, unfortunately um, uh, was, it didn't work out, there was um, a miscarriage. And so that would have been my older sister. And my mother made every mistake in the book when it came to opening up a restaurant. She opened a restaurant in an oversaturated Vietnamese food environment in the Lion Plaza. She did not seek professional help. She tried to do everything by herself, did not open an LLC or a C corporation, so her personal assets were at risk. And so I learned over time that there's more to just simply doing business than just simply um, uh, doing it by yourself. And so I decided to go with a franchise because a franchise essentially is you're licensing a successful business model, right? But you still have the independence to be your own business owner. Think about the McDonald's in the world. McDonald's are not actually giant corporations. They're usually independent mom and pop businesses. And every single one of those brands is because somebody had the ingenuity that wanted to do business for themselves but not completely alone. And so I opened up a franchise restaurant with a brand called Teriyaki Madness. And so I'm looking forward to uh, opening up the first few stores in Silicon Valley and uh, helping others at the same time. Super exciting, super exciting. So we really wouldn't be here today without director Javier Aguirre. And Javier, if you can come up now, we kind of saved uh, the best for last here. The county is the one who put out this RFP who believes in entrepreneurship. And Javier, we just want to, one, thank you for giving us this opportunity to all come together and do this important work. But we wanna know why. Why did you see this as an opportunity? Like this is not what most departments, right, focus on entrepreneurship. Why and what is the opportunity you see with this new partnership? Well, th thank you, Alfredo, for that question. And again, um, want to thank everyone for being here. Um, a few years ago, when well, ten years ago, when we opened the Reentry Resource Centers, um, the first one here in San Jose, and then followed by Gilroy in South County, um, we were challenged by our county executive officer to create opportunities, opportunities for our clients. Um, right behind us is our main jail and we have Alamo Correctional Facility in Milpitas. There's 3,000 individuals right now um, behind bars. Um, so it is our hope that your presence here and the opportunities that you will create for individuals that are in our custodial um, facilities, the opportunities for them to re-engage um, in the community. When I heard about the statistics in terms of um, uh, recidivism and reducing jail population, Entrepreneurial path is one amazing um, uh, ability for us to give back. And when I heard about um, ESO, ESO Ventures and other opportunities in creating these um, uh, entrepreneurial cohorts, it really inspired my team to um, create this request for proposal. Um, but we wouldn't be here without the support of our Board of Supervisors, the elected officials who have invested millions of dollars to um, the services that we provide. Um, so it was that idea that uh, our, the challenge that we were given to create opportunities 
uh, for a path for employment. Um, every time, you know, uh, many of you who uh, meet with our clients behind bars in our custodial um, facilities, you know that there's that they need a glimmer of hope. And my hope is starting today and starting tomorrow, when we all have a chance to speak to our clients in jail, we let them know about this program. So they could be inspired and start thinking about the businesses that they want to create when they are released and starting their journey. Um, what a great way to give back to the communities. Um, when I heard about all these different businesses, there's all these downtowns in our county um, hoping to have this the new business and and to have a a customer base and that's us here. So that's what inspired us to create this vision to partner with um, the team here um, and to create just um, a glimmer of hope for our clients that are, are returning back to our communities. And that word. This on? There it is. Hope is, right, that's a beautiful word. But hope, we need to put some reality behind the hope. We need to make that hope practical. We need to make it real, right? And that's kind of what we're about here, is about making it real. So we are recruiting 20 entrepreneurs to join this new cohort starting on July 10th. Next year, we'll be, be recruiting 30 or 40 entrepreneurs. Our goal is to invest in, to incubate and invest in 40 new businesses in Santa Clara County. There's another hope that Sabrina mentioned. Sabrina, what's that hope again? County contracts. So I'm, a, I'm gonna throw you a softball, Javier. Just doing this RFP, bringing us here, that's a beautiful thing. What else could the county do? What is the opportunity here? If we really do create a pipeline of new businesses, re-entry businesses, what might be on the other side of that incubation? So. Um, the county contracts millions, millions of dollars in um, services, whether it's um, landscaping, whether it's um, food for events, um, catering services, um, whether it's for service organizations like a lot of our, ours here, um, whether it's uh, behavioral health treatment and um, just multiple of janitorial services, multiple of county contracts. Um, the county is one of the largest employers here at the, in, this, in, in Silicon Valley, uh, we have about 23,000 employees. Um, so you can imagine the opportunities that exist in terms of contracting. And many um, contracts are through nonprofits or for-profits that, um, that apply for these opportunities. Um, one thing that we're looking at is operating our county cafeteria with a culinary academy, establish a culinary academy. That is our next um, step in terms of investing in our cafeteria. Um, we got to feed and provide coffee for our, thousands of our county employees. Um, and so I'm hoping that through these type of ventures, there's opportunities to create coffee kiosks. Um, you're sitting in one of 10 or 20 different county locations um, where there's county employees. Um, so that's something that uh, I look forward to. There's also um, support from the Board of Supervisors to look at uh, landscaping services um, through um, local businesses. Um, so those are just a handful of opportunities. But one thing that I want to also remind folks that uh, um, the county is looking at investing into our community. So even folks that create businesses um, that are looking at um, training employees and those employees could be our future workforce here in the county of Santa Clara. Let's give it up for the county. Do you all see the cycle here that we're able to start, right? The seed and how it starts to recycle. And right, if we can recycle the dollars between the county, between the entrepreneur and the community and back into the county, you see that virtuous cycle we're creating? That's what this is about, right? It's, it's hope, but it's real hope because it's, it's rewiring the system, right? So we're gonna end with a final word from the each of you, hearing a little bit more about the county, hearing Eddie's story, knowing about all the resources that Vanessa has, Israel, knowing the work that you've been doing for so many years, what is that hope you really wanna see? 
Well, first and foremost, I want to really stop the pipeline of youth going into the judicial system, right? But in addition to that, I think it is incredibly important that we as a community, because again, the city has not done this alone, right? So we have faith organizations, nonprofit organizations that are working with us to actually like work with our youth in our community. So ensuring that this, all our organizations understand the, the opportunities, you know, that we're talking about here, but also how do we get even uh, money, capital, into the hands of youth so that they can start their own programs, right? So we have a model, we got to then actually like execute it, you know, and so I'm hoping that through our connections here and through even all of our partners, you know, with the county and so forth, that we're able to continue to basically cultivate the seed that we're talking about. And that is real hope, folks, you know, like I've, I'm very hopeful that, you know, that through the work that we're doing, through the work that the partnerships that we created, that we are going to continue to like see you thrive in the city of San Jose and throughout the county. Thank you, Israel. Eddie, see the hope. My hope is that we can take one step towards breaking the cycle of poverty by encouraging minority entrepreneurs to do business together and to thrive together. Um, and I want to go back to my earlier point, which is that I think one major key is mentorship. Mentorship allows you to save years of time and learn from the mistake of others, learn from the success of others, and how to apply it to your business today. And I want to go to an earlier point where one other speaker said that of the three C's, have the confidence to reach out to other entrepreneurs. And so I strongly encourage you to have the confidence to reach out to me. I'm dead serious about being able to help you with mentoring your business, or if I can't help, there's someone in my network who can. Thank you. Thank you, Eddie. Vanessa, that seed of hope. Um, my hope will, my hope is to see um, as many justice involved individuals uh, take advantage of this opportunity. So an opportunity is a set of circumstances that makes it possible to do something. So with the opportunity that ESO is giving many of our justice involved individuals, uh, I hope to see that when one sees, when one has success, and others see that he or she can, so can I. And my hope is to see that that ripple effect just continue to grow. Awesome. And Javier, a final hope. What, do, what, do you, what are you expecting, right? You kind of brought us all together here. What do you want us to do these next two years? Well, I think um, our hope is to be the customers of all these businesses. And like Ben said, you know, he purchased his new at clothing attire or a coffee from the businesses that come out of ESSO. So I'm hoping that um, we don't have to go all the way to Oakland, but we have some of these businesses here locally, um, here in San Jose, down in South County in Gilroy Morgan Hill, that we could then support the, uh, these new businesses. But all, not only that, but highlight the community that folks that are coming out of our jail system, our prison, our, our community, our people, and they have a story to tell. And through uh, their business, their story is going to be amplified, and there's going to be more support to make sure that we are doing what we were asked to do, reduce our jail population and the hope of creating opportunities for our clients. Thank you, Javier. Let's give it up for the panel. <laughs> you guys can kind of come down, and I think there's going to be a little networking at the end. But now we have, I'm going to give it the mic back to my amazing colleague, Ms. Sabrina Mutukrishna. Thank you, Alfredo. Thank you to our wonderful panelists. Um, I also just, I want to highlight um, that we have an advisory council. And Vanessa sits on our advisory council, as does Jovan. So Jovan, if you wouldn't mind standing up. <laughs> um, and the goal of our, and Marshall as well that you've met. So the goal of our advisory council is for us to continue these conversations, right? Because it's not just a one conversation, it's for us to, um, to, iterate, to iterate and to resource each other and make sure that entrepreneurs in this cohort and for next year are, are you know, really getting the resources that they need. Um, with that said, I'm very excited to introduce our newest program manager, Marion, who is our will be overseeing this program um, and is going to talk about the program elements and we'll leave some space for Q&A. So please give a, a welcome to Marion. 
All right. So can everyone hear me? And elbow tap someone behind you. Say hello, right? We want to build community. 30 seconds. Oh. And then? Oh. Okay. Yes. Thank you. There you go. Give a smile. That's free. All right. And you have 10 seconds to bring it back down. So I hope you all got to meet someone new, give a smile, give a head nod. And as you know, we have networking after. So make sure you reconnect with whoever you just met tonight, I, today. Um, so we're at ESSO, we're all about building community. And I wouldn't want to talk about it if I also didn't model it. So that's a little piece for me to you. Um, thank you. Do we have a clicker? OK. All right, perfect. Thank you, Sabrina. All right, so we've been talking a lot about what we do, but I'm going to dig into the meat of what we do. But before that, who am I? Who's this woman standing in front of you? Why is she here? So I'm Marian Araque Cuervo. I'm first generation Latina. I am from New York. I'm from the East Coast. I do like the West Coast. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and so I have been a teacher. I've worked in nonprofit. I've worked in venture capital. But for me, I felt like I had to come back to the community. How do I make real change that makes a difference? Um, and so I live in Oakland currently, and it is a pleasure and privilege to be in your presence today. And so I thank you for your attention. All right, next slide, please. All right, so why our incubator? Um, so we work with entrepreneurs to ensure the following, right? We want to market to new customers, grow revenue, really understand what it means to run a fully functional business, become formalized, and actually have access to funding. Um, and what that means for us, thank you, um, so our program values, we really work to create safe places for our entrepreneurs, no matter their walks of life. And what that means for us is really thinking about, right, how do we put plans into action, uh, being authentic, showing up authentically like yourself, right, Com thinking about your confidence, uh, inspiring positive pressure, right, using and leveraging our community, both the entrepreneurs and within our team, to support one each other. Um, think about compassion and really working on changing that growth mindset as we go through this 10 week, 20 week journey. Um, and again, in a place of safety. So what does this mean? In the next 20 weeks, so the incubation program starts July 10th. Um, and here are some of the pieces, nuts and bolts, that really create the culture that we want to kind of share with our entrepreneurs. And so we start with weekly workshop sessions. We have Monday and Thursday workshops, uh, with, along with office hours and study hall time. So these are led by instructors, by entrepreneurs as well, and it's an opportunity for our, for our entrepreneurs to access some of the trainings that we have. Um, and so we have evening sessions twice a week, and it's 20 weeks long, so there's an even week where it's mandatory, and the off week is optional. So people can still come in, entrepreneurs can still come in, access office hours, access study hall time um, as they need. This is followed by, this is just kind of like walking you through a Thursday schedule, a sample, right? With our first session kind of starting like, I am an entrepreneur, really owning that experience. And then walking through the storytelling, getting to know the customer journey, uh, really thinking about how do I do sales? What is it like to be a sales leader? And then formalizing the business and kind of concluding with like, I'm the COO, I'm the decision maker. So this is kind of a high level overview of what these workshops are about as you go through the process. Um, and part of our Thursdays is also the, the idea of having growth pods. So what are growth pods? This is an opportunity that we like to think about as collective entrepreneurship. So it's an opportunity for our entrepreneurs to connect with one another, right? We want to make sure that this community is sustainable. Like, yes, we're here and we're great, but we're not here forever if we're going to real talk about it, right? So we want to make sure that the entrepreneurs also have an opportunity to have self-resource to get to know each other and really build these relationships, right? I feel like most of the entrepreneurs in our program are going to be in Santa Clara and they're and like just think about the compound effect of building those relationships throughout the programming and beyond so that is something we really really like to work on 
Um, and this is followed by a digital workbook. So along with the workshop sessions that we have, there's a digital workbook where entrepreneurs, it's very self-paced, there's about eight modules, and opportunities to kind of build the business model frameworks that they're working on um, that also coincides with the workshops that we're leading um, on the Mondays and Thursdays. And something that Ben, one of our partners, has been working on is this platform where entre entrepreneurs can access the workbook here and also access other resources. So no matter where you are, there's never an excuse. If you have access to internet, you can log onto the platform and really get the opportunity to, um, to do all the self-paced uh, workbook sessions and the resources that we will have throughout um, the 20 weeks. Action logs are just another way to kind of keep an eye on an entrepreneurs. How's the progress going? Kind of an uh, thinking about accountability and just another way to kind of reflect on the different concepts that you've been learning um, and also just, yeah, just to practice those concepts and really put uh, apply what you've learned throughout each session. And then last but not least, we have coaching opportunities. We work with coaches um, and the entrepreneurs have the opportunity to have one-on-one -on -one sessions. There's also group sessions. Um, and we encourage folks to really capitalize on that. And something that one of our founders was just speaking about, um, the business owner, right? The power of mentorship, right? So thinking about coaching, mentorship, really having that support system as you're building your business as you go. And this is the wonderful programs team. Without them, this would not be possible. Um, you'll see us scattered throughout. Please ignore my photo, focus on this face right here. Much more up to date. Um, and so thank you all, that is our team. And what do we do next, next steps? So please share this link. We will share this deck with you all. Um, check your emails. But we have this link here. Please uh, share it with entrepreneurs that you know, with your community, with whomever you think would be a good fit. We want to make sure we're, we're getting the, the good news out. Um, and then just keep an eye out on our email to get a collection of this. And then if you have any questions, my email's up there. But I also just threw a lot of information at you and want to take the next four to five minutes, I'm not sure how much time I have, uh, to open it up for uh, questions from you all. What questions do you have? I just spit a lot, and maybe if someone could raise their hand and say, hey, Marion, I would like to learn X. Can you X? Yes, in the back. What is your name? Oh, oh, thank you, Alfredo. Hi, James, nice to meet you. Um, so, are, it, you have to have the ideas. We really want to work with entrepreneurs who have ideation stage, right? We're here to support you in building and scaling something out. Um, do you have an idea, James? Then it sounds like you're a great candidate. Hi, uh, my name is Juan Vela. I'm a manager. I actually work with the Office of uh, Diversion and Reentry Services. I kind of have more of a, of, of a comment or a challenge. And, It begins while the individuals are still in custody. So where I kind of see an opportunity here is to create an opportunity for the individuals who are currently incarcerated to, to jail upon release. So I really kind of would like to see, when we talk about planting the seed with the youth, also planting the seed while the individuals are still um, in custody. Yes, and I would love to thank you for that. Um, this is also a pilot program, and we invite you. We're not all the experts, right? I think we're experts together, and it takes a village. Um, so I hope we're, that we're connected um, to have continue this conversation, and thank you for that. Yeah, yes, Rick. Hi. Uh, oh. So I'm just curious. Once, once the program actually starts in July, is there a physical address that's going to be down in Santa Clara County that we can access, or is everything going to be done either virtual or in Alameda County? Great question. So currently, as the program stands, we are virtual. Um, but we do want to open up the opportunity for any community uh, organizations out here in Santa Clara, if you have space to offer us to be able to do some in-person uh, workshops or sessions, uh, we'd love to talk to you. Um, so yeah, if that is a need, and also like we want to meet our entrepreneurs where they're at. If that becomes a need and something that our entrepreneurs really want, then absolutely we'll work towards kind of building that, that, that for you. Um, okay. So what's your name? My name is Julian Delgadillo. I'm with the Good Samaritan Reentry Project. Uh, Pleasure to okay, meet you. Okay, my, my question is, 
okay, if this is for those who are justice involved, okay, does it also apply to their families? So since I have a history of uh, being justice involved, but my son does not, does he qualify for this program? So we have other programs as well. Um, and I think I might want to lean into our partner in front of us to make sure that I don't say anything I shouldn't say. <laughs> um, let's discuss it. That is a, a great question. But we do have other programs. Somebody just heard about this and texted me like, hey, I have a reentry person, but they're in Alameda County. I was like, not this program, but another program. So we do have options for you, uh, for you to explore. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Can you hear this? We're recruiting 125 more entrepreneurs around the Bay Area in September. Lots of opportunities. So I'm going to take your question a little bit further because I, I have a feeling that you might have a question that I was thinking of. What is your requirement? What is the requirement for somebody to, to be eligible for this program? And then if you guys need a conference room that can seat six people, we have one at Pro Bono. Great question. Um, have an idea, want to really build something from beginning and then be part of this process and be, we want entrepreneurs who want to be here, right? This isn't a job, this is for you. We want you to have that hunger to really build um, and then have, be just, uh, justice involved, have some kind of record and then hey, we're here for you. And if not, like we spoke earlier, we do have other programs around the Bay uh, that folks can access. Um, no, it's a great question. Uh, yes, Santa Clara County resident. And there is access to the incubator, and then there's access to the fund. To access the fund, you have to be a formal business, and you have to be in operation. Yes, we have a question up here, and then Alfred on the back. Question and maybe comment. Um, Nora Razon, um, do you have to, I mean, if I'm recently out of the system, I might not have an address in Santa Clara County but I might have been part of the system in Santa Clara County. So clarifying that if someone was part of an institution in Santa Clara County, does that qualify them? So there was like nuances there. Um, and just encourage everyone, sometimes we don't um, think about people as being just as involved or having had, you know, uh, but still sharing this with your networks because they may not introduce their son, their brother, as someone that's been incarcerated. Um, but if you mention it, they'll pass on the voice. Uh, to answer your question, yes. We, and we can further connect offline. Question in the back. Uh, yes, my name is Ricky Goins. I'm a case manager at Goodwill. Um, my question for you is, um, what does the time commitment look like? I know you had um, the week schedule up there, but for people that work full time, that maybe are on probation or parole and have a lot of other commitments going on, um, I'm, I'm wondering if they could potentially have the capacity to do all of that at the same time. Yes, great question. So the way that we've kind of built out the program, it's twice a week in the evenings, trying to be considerate of obviously full-time employment or employment and other responsibilities. Um, but a requirement is it's like, do you really want to kind of take your business to the next level or your idea? So making sure that you're putting yourself first, right? Yourself, your business. Um, ideally, you are kind of being present for those for that one on week, which is like Monday, Thursdays. And then there's that second week, the odd week, which is like an optional drop in time to be thoughtful about, you know, life. I hope that helps. Yes. Uh, hi, my name is Ameka. Uh, I'm with Mission Possible Reentry Center from Maranatha Christian Center. Um, my question was kind of similar along to what he just asked. Um, you know, once people do, they got their work schedule and they have all these things going, there is that transition between like, you know, I'm going and leaving what I got going to start something new, you know what I mean? And that's probably the most like mind consuming and like worrisome part of people making that leap. So is there any kind of like assistance to help bridge that um, with them? Because you know, obviously finances are always going to be an issue. But for somebody to like bridge that gap to say, hey, look, we know you're going to make this transition from your regular full time job to where you're 
going to start pushing something or do you guys try to like transition it while they're working? Um, stuff like that, just to, you know, give them that confidence that, hey, you know, I'm not just taking this leap and there's just a gap under me where I could just fall and break both my legs, basically. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yes, I'm going to let Ben answer that. Um, great question. So let me just start. ESO works in community, right? Like we are not the entrepreneurial ecosystem. We are not the solution, the end all be all. Um, so that's why we have this event. So we can figure out who are the community partners, what are the right conversations we can start having so that entrepreneurs can get a stipend, right? Or can get like a six month work thing. Um, and maybe it's a foundation, maybe it's a nonprofit we can approach. So that's a great question and that's how we work. It's how can we resource these entrepreneurs? The other thing we don't do is tell people to leap when we know it's gonna be a hard fall. Right, like that, it'd be totally irresponsible. And when we talk about running a fully functional business, when we talk about coaching, it's so the entrepreneur can mentally prepare to say, okay, hey, I'm ready to make this commitment. My family's ready, I'm ready, and I can support myself, right? Or I may need to moonlight and get a job for a little while while my other business is taking off. So we are, um, we look at the whole human and we're not just about create a business, right? Like I said on the stage, like the answer may be, this is not for you, but let's take the time to figure it out. So we are with them all the way. Um, and if it's too risky, again, it's entrepreneurial spirit, so I'm, gonna be like, I'm doing it anyway. We're gonna be like, well, we're here to be with you. Um, but ideally, we want them to know that there are true realities and it's not a romanticized journey you're about to go on. But everyone in this room, like, let's work in partnership and figure out what is the right answer for entrepreneurs so that they can succeed, especially when they're coming from a re-entry disadvantaged background where society pretty much puts labels on them, that's gonna hold them back. Um, but we're only gonna do that, all of us working and talking together. Yes, sir. Um, they have to be in, in the county, so. That is the, the individual entrepreneur. Yep, the entrepreneur has to reside in the, in the county, right? Because we want the county to be built up and we want opportunity to come from the county. Oh, the business is in the county, the entrepreneur is out of the county. Um, if, if it's registered in Santa Clara County. I think so, but let's talk to the people and get back to you with that answer. All right, but that's a great scenario. Again, we, you have great scenarios in your head. I just need to kick it with you <laughs> all day. Be like, man, do I think through everything? <laughs> Thank you for that question. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? Or, okay. Yeah, quick question. Um, like Vanessa, um, I'm with Catholic Charities Employment Services. We do the same services. Um, trying to find clients with... Um, Jobs, opportunities, not going to be so forth. But what I want to what I want to focus on is incarceration. Like seriously, thank you guys for your team reentry. I've been there. We sit there and we contemplate all day. What can we do to make things better for our family, for our life, for our children? And sometimes we have clients come out and I'm like, let me help you get a job. I'm here for you. I got you. Don't worry about this. And they're like, yeah, great, but I got a plan. I want to start a business. I've been thinking for years about this. Well, now I know I can refer them to you guys, to your team, because there's so many opportunities. They're going to come home one way or another. They're going to go back into what they used to do, or they're going to go back and change recidivism, right? That's what we're for. So I just want to personally thank you all for bringing this to our county. Hopefully, we can work hand in hand and basically start you know, making some changes in this community. Thank you. We're also connected, correct? We will. We will be great. <laughs> great, great. Um, all right. Is this? This is. Thank you so much for your time. Yes. Wait. One more question in the back. Yeah. Real quick. If somebody has a uh, juvenile record, let's say they are an adult, and but they had like you know juvenile history, um, would that qualify them still for the program? Yes. Excellent. Great question. All right. I'll see you all at networking. Looking forward to getting cards. <laughs> Thank you, Marion. Um, before we release you, sorry, we have one, one last thing before we release you. Um, 
Thank you. Uh, so before I came on to ESO, um, I had a catering business that hired reentry um, workforce, and there was a lot. There's a lot of hard things about running a business, um, but one of the things that was less hard that I found was the strength of the community. Um, I got so many customers from folks like you in this room, the city of Oakland, from Rediff. I, you know, like the amount of support on the customer side and being able to get business was astronomical. And it made it the other problems easier, right? Like knowing that you had real people behind you that supported you. Um, so with that said, I am very excited to bring up Melissa Contreras, who is catering our lunch. So do not leave because the lunch is, yes, please give it up. Melissa finished her LLC. Yes, last week. You got insurance. And I also want to say it came through Goodwill. So Crystal, Vanessa, thank you. Uh, Carmen. Um, and so I want to hand it over to you to talk, you know, get all this business. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, I had a speech, but I kind of lost the words in my mind. <laughs> um, I'm going to just be humble and tell you guys a little bit about my story. Um, I was like an addict for like 25 years plus. Um, in and out of jail, finally landed in prison. And I guess when I was there, um, and my dad would come visit me, and he's getting old, and um, you know, all my brothers and sisters are successful, entrepreneurs, business owners. I was the only one that was messed up. Um, I didn't know how to like compete or like live up to them, so I just kept doing the bad things that I was doing. Um, before I came home from that long stretch, I um, kind of just told myself that um, I'm gonna come out and just do. I'm gonna come out and do right and live right and just be happy, you know, whatever that was gonna be. And um, I couldn't find a job. Um, I, was, I'm a, I was a felon, I was on parole, no one would hire me. Costco, Safeway, everybody said no. And so then I was like, okay, I'm gonna go to the Goodwill. And um, I started working there for like, I think it was not even a month. <laughs> and they found me another job. And I started working at a gas station for three plus years. Um, but during that gas station job, um, I was working for my brother's catering company, which they've been running for 10 years and plus years. Um, and so I was like, hey, you know, I love doing this. It makes me happy. Um, I can do this myself. I run their whole setup so I can do my own thing. And so little by little, I started to get it together and um, build Un Tacos Mas. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, not knowing the um, circumstances that I was going to be facing, I didn't know how, nothing about an LLC, I didn't know nothing about insurance, I didn't know nothing about the back end. The front end, 100%. The back end, I didn't know. So Crystal hit me up and told me about this program and introduced me to Sabrina. <laughs> and Sabrina was just like, I mean, I can't tell you like how much she's helped me. Um, I had a 500 person party for Cinco de Mayo and I, yeah, and I couldn't get it though. I couldn't get it at the moment because my LLC wasn't there. But with Sabrina's help, the day before I got it, yeah, yeah. So it was probably like the biggest payout I ever had in my whole entire life. <laughs> really excited about it. <laughs> um, but all I gotta say is like, you know, if you love doing something and it's your passion, and you get up in the morning and you know um, you're happy about doing what you're doing, then go for it. Start that business up and make it your own because there's endless of possibilities with the Goodwill, with Sabrina, with everybody here in the county. Like, they help you out so much. And before I used to be like, oh, I don't want to go over there. I don't want to get help, you know? I don't want to go to Reentry Center. Like, I don't want to do all that, you know? But why not? There's so many resources. And honestly, if I didn't have these beautiful ladies and men in my life, I would never be where I'm at today. So let's go enjoy my food. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. I have an extensive menu, you guys, real quick. Um, I do, my, mine's a little bit different than uh, my family's because um, I do uh, hands-on, like, fresh chips made on site. I do fresh churros made on site. All my agua frescas are fresh fruit with just a little bit of sugar and water. Um, yeah, I can't cook on site here. I had to cook it at my house and bring it, but um, everything's fresh on site. I mean, um, I just found a different way of... I, I didn't copy my brother, I made it my own. My salsas that you're gonna try today, they're my own. I have pastor out there, I have asada, I have pollo, I have fajitas, yeah, rice, homemade rice and, yeah, today. 
Yeah. I have a pineapple nopala pica de gallo. That's a big hit on Yelp. Um, my orange sauce, don't sleep on it. Everybody, everybody's going crazy on it. Yeah, it's amazing, it's amazing. I have custom made tortillas. Um, I didn't order them today, but I can do any color you want. Anything that fits your party needs, I got you. My business cards are outside on the table. Please grab one. And don't worry, I'm, I'm, I'm fishing. I have everything I need. All you just have to do is just bring your hungry stomachs and that's it. All right, that was a good ending. We gotta eat, the food is delicious. It's gonna be right outside. I don't, can we go, can we exit that way? Yeah, yeah, and then, yes, food. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. <laughs>